What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and today's video is going to be a guide on how to beat Harvest Child, which is the lair boss of the Fetter. So if you want to learn how to beat this boss very consistently, then stay tuned. Before we get started, as always, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts down below in the comments to make sure to check out the box for all the helpful links like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, my Epic Game Store code, all that cool stuff. This guide will be broken into three parts, so we're going to talk about the mechanics and the attacks of the boss to begin with. Then we're going to talk about the units and skills that are very good to combat this boss with. And then finally, we're going to end with some extra tips and what types of items you should bring. So the way Harvest Child works is the baby, so the boss itself, likes to move from the back up to the front. It does a three turn sequence of moves and has two actions per turn. So we'll start off usually with Sapid Drippings, but sometimes this could be tantalizing tidbits. Sapid Drippings is an attack that hits both of your backline units and it does some okay on hit damage and then blights them for four points. The move it does in the middle usually is tantalizing tidbit. This is a single target move that just does a little bit of stress and it's really nothing to worry about. So usually when you're fighting this boss, you wanna keep it in the back or the middle if you can. The move that you do need to worry about is called Maws of Life. This is when the baby is up front it attacks both of your frontline units with a pretty strong on-hit damage attack as well as a bleed damage over time. For those of you familiar with Darkest Dungeon 1, this is going to feel a lot like the boss of the Warrens called the Flesh, where it has a frontline bleed cleave as well as a backline blight cleave. Since Harvest Child is very linear in terms of its attack patterns, it's pretty easy to understand what it's going to do or what it's capable of doing. So if you can't remember exactly which moves you need to be worried about every time you're fighting it just make sure it's not in the very front because when it's in the front is when it does the most damage there are two piles of meat that fight alongside the harvest child they both use an attack called mouthwatering aroma so the main mechanic of these is it puts this little knife and fork hunger token on your character and if they get up to the front of the party so if they're in rank one so the very very front of your party and it's their turn and they have the hunger token they will try to eat something so you don't get to attack, you have to spend your turn eating either the small meat or the big meat. Usually it's better to eat the big meat, that's the one that has the cleaver sticking out of it, has a few more hit points, we'll talk about why in a minute. But there are a few ways to prevent this, but this is mostly the main mechanic of the fight. The boss does some pretty decent damage the whole time, but then also while it's doing that damage to you, it's trying to disrupt you by moving you out of position and then blinding your backline. So the small meat is the one that targets your backline. We don't usually worry about this one anymore just because it's... It's mostly bait, if you want to think of it like that. It's really just not that threatening. It's more annoying than anything else. But this one blinds you, and it only targets your backline. So that means your backline is usually pretty safe in most parties, and they won't get pulled up to the front, but still good to have some insurance. But otherwise, we're not usually worried about the small meat. The big meat with the cleaver sticking out of it, that is the one we need to be worried about. That one targets your front line, which means that your front line is more susceptible to wasting turns trying to eat instead of fighting the boss. And it also inflicts vulnerable on the people that it targets. This is way more dangerous, especially considering when the baby gets up front, it uses Maws of Life, which already has some pretty solid on hit damage. But if you have vulnerable and you're getting hit by this, you're probably taking around 10 to 12 damage at that point. And that's not even including the bleed. This is what I meant when I said that the small meat is bait. So if you're sitting there spending turns trying to do 40 damage to the small meat instead of killing the big meat, the big meat is sitting there hitting vulnerable on your front line. Your front line's wasting turns trying to eat instead of doing damage. And then they're taking a bunch of extra damage because they're vulnerable from the baby's biggest attack. When a unit is forced to eat the meat, they do a bit of damage to the meat, which is pretty nice. So that helps you kill them if you're actually trying to do that. But then they lose a percentage of their max HP. If this keeps happening over the course of a fight, you can see your front line units down to about half of their total HP which is a bit scary. To sum up this section, if you want to kill any of the meat, you kill the big cleaver meat and then try and keep the baby out of the front as long as you can. The cool part about this boss is that a lot of strategies work, so you have a lot of tools at your disposal if you want to fight Harvest Child. But out of everyone, I think the three best characters, you know, I hesitate to use that word usually, but I think the three best specifically for this encounter are Plague Doctor and Hellion and Runaway. I would actually say Hellion might be the best unit just overall for this fight just because Hellion can spam toe to toe. When toe to toe especially upgraded, it has some pretty nice effects like removing winded, but the best thing about toe to toe is it moves her forward and it immobilizes her. So if a unit is immobilized, no one can move past it. You've probably seen some weird funky sequence like if someone's immobilized in the middle of your party, 
and then you move around them, it like swaps one and three, stuff like that, which is kind of annoying. But with someone immobilized in rank one, and Man at Arms can do this too, but he has a condition he has to not be in rank one, but Hellion can do toe to toe in rank one. I digress. But the reason immobilize is so good is if the person in rank one is immobilized, no one can go past them into rank one, which means that if you have someone stuck up in the front, no one can go past that character to eat meat. So even if you get the hunger tokens on the rest of your party, if someone is just permanently immobilized up front, only one character will be the victim of the boss mechanic. There are a lot of other things I'll mention in this guide, but I think that Hellion with toe, -to -toe is probably the most consistent strategy that I've seen so far. The next character who's pretty good in this fight is Jester. Jester can do a lot of interesting things that helps your team for the boss mechanic. So Jester can move himself around all the time with Razor's Wits and Fade to Black. Both of those are pretty dang good moves. But also Jester has other moves to move the rest of your party, such as Play Out and Battle Ballad. And then if you really want to get spicy and you understand when to use the button, you can also use Encore to give someone an extra turn. But the reason Jester is so valued for this fight is because Jester can move your party around if played correctly to keep them out of danger for you know several situations and also give himself dodge so he doesn't get targeted as much by mechanics and stuff so jester can just do a lot when you take jester to this fight you usually want to put him in the back of your party so rank four or three this way he has access to his songs and encore the third character i will mention for being good in this fight is plague doctor no surprise i guess just because plague doctor is a very consistent healer but Plague Doctor has some really interesting things she can do in this fight. She has Incision, which can do some okay damage, but we don't really care too much about her doing damage. The reason we want to take Plague Doctor is two different reasons. You want Battlefield Medicine to clear all the dots when people get beat up really bad. That's pretty nice. But the biggest reason to take Plague Doctor is Indiscriminate Science. Indiscriminate Science, once it's upgraded, can remove negative tokens off the rest of your team which means it can remove the hunger token, which nullifies the boss mechanic. So as long as Plague Doctor is in a position to use indiscriminate science and you give her a little bit of speed, maybe from a quirk or a trinket, and she can go first consistently, she can just take the hunger off of anyone, especially if they're low HP. And as I said, nullify the boss mechanic that way. If Harvest Child is in the middle and the cleaver meat is also in the back, then Plague Doctor has the added benefit of being able to use Blinding Gas just to slow the fight down a little bit more. The final nice benefit of Plague Doctor is, as far as other characters that sit in the back goes, she's not as much of a dedicated damage dealer, so when the cleaver, not the cleaver, the small meat hits you with blind tokens, Plague Doctor doesn't really care. She can just sit there and throw out support moves while she's waiting. Okay, so this is awkward. I know I mentioned three characters, but I can't remember exactly which three I mentioned. So I'm going to talk about Runaway as well, because I might have mentioned her, I can't remember. Either way, Runaway is also good in this fight. She has Cauterize to help you deal with the bleed damage from Maws of Life, which is really good. She has Smokescreen that has a double blind, which really slows down Harvest Child, which is very nice also. And then finally, the other really good move she has is Ransack. So Ransack can move Runaway forward. It can also pull an enemy one space, which means you can pull you know stuff out of position. You can pull the baby up to the front if you want to deal with Maws of Life or whatever. You know, maybe you have bleed resist trinkets or bleed resist items and you've blinded Harvest Child so you're not really worried about Maws of Life. There are times to do that, but the biggest reason to use Ransack is pretty simple. It's a dance move. So Runaway likes to be in either spot one or spot two of your party, usually spot two. So if someone gets pulled in front of her from rank three, like your Jester or your Plague Doctor, she can use Ransack and move past them for no effort. As I said though, other characters work fine for this fight. It's just that between them and the characters I've mentioned, I think these ones have a lot of tools at their disposal that match up the best against the mechanics. The core of the strategy really comes down to having some form of immobilize, or having sufficient healing, or having ways to disrupt Harvest Child, or having dance moves, or having access to really big combo damage. Not necessarily combo tokens, but things like using Vulnerable, and then also like Burning Stars, or Howling End, just anything that can do a lot of damage quickly can do pretty well in this fight. So you have a lot of options. As I said, these are the things I think are core to the fight, so you just have to be creative from that point. The final section of the video is gonna talk about some items and other strats we can do. The first tip is debuff resist. So go figure debuff resist is very important in this fight. It can help you block the vulnerable or the blind, depending on where you're at, as well as the hunger. The hunger is, I believe, debuff resistant, so 
If you have someone that can get high debuff resistance through trinkets or they have naturally high debuff resistance, then they should do okay in this fight. But even if you don't want to go that way, there are plenty of items that can also supplement your strategy. The first being bear traps. Bear traps are pretty cool because they immobilize the target and then do a little bit of bleed damage. So if you want to stop Harvest Child from using Maws of Life for a couple turns, you can just hit it with a bear trap and get it stuck somewhere and then it takes a bit longer to get up front, which is pretty nice. And then also probably the MVP item for this fight is actually Holy Water. I have not really used Holy Water in the past, but Holy Water can cleanse all the tokens at the same time. I don't know if that's intended because the wording of Holy Water says that there's a combo token, it cleanses everything. But the way it works right now is that it cleanses everything. So if you have a hunger token and vuln or hunger token and blind, for instance, just hit someone with Holy Water. It's much like indiscriminate science for the same reason that it just takes it off of them. There are other defensive items that you can use. Bandages help mitigate the Maws of Life damage. Healing Salve is just good overall to have healing on hand. Triage kits if your level's high enough or basically bigger healing salve. And then any items that give you stuff like bleed resist or bleed cure and stuff like that can be good too. We don't care as much about Blight because the backline damage in this fight is not as important as the frontline. The final set of items is a bit tougher to make, you know, up to maximum benefit or use to maximum benefit, I should say. And those are damage over time items. I believe there's one, I forget the name of it, but it's a uh, one of the crystal powder looking ones that does like a five point burn and a five point blight or something like that. If you can get some source of crit token with those and have an item like that and then get the crit token and then hit the item and both of those stick, that goes for instead of five damage for over three turns, it goes for five damage to five turns, which is 25. And there's two damage over time effects. So if you can get a crit token on one of these items, you can do 50 damage from one damage over time item. That's almost half of the boss's HP. I guess that's why this is my favorite boss out of all the layers currently, just because for one, it's unsettling to look at, but two, it's actually a very good boss in terms of mechanics. I feel like the mechanics are pretty solid. It has a lot of moving parts going on, which means it has a lot of answers to them. You don't need every single answer to win this fight, but if you have like two or three answers, then you can make this fight feel pretty easy. To sum up the strategy for Harvest Child, you basically want to burn the boss as fast as you can, so you want to kill Harvest Child quickly, you don't want it to hang around and do stuff, because if you spend time killing both meats, Harvest Child just sits up front and spans Maws of Life. That is how you're going to die in most cases, so you want to avoid that, which means any really good damage dealer out there can do pretty good work here. A Cultist with Burning Stars is nice, or someone like Highwayman that can give himself dodge and then do a bunch of crit and stuff like that is good. Hellion can do a lot of damage, and any other synergies you can come up with can also do pretty good. If you do feel that you have to kill any of the meat, you should only kill the big meat with the cleaver sticking out of it. That is the one that targets your front line. You want to kill that one. You want to leave the back line one alone because as I said, it's bait. So yeah, you just want to kill the boss as quickly as possible. Pretty much ignore the mechanics, especially if you have access to immobilize and you can have someone just anchored up in rank one. That will make burning the boss much easier than if you did not have that. And if someone does get up front and they have to eat one of the meats, then make sure they eat the big one. So that way you can do a little bit of damage to that and wear it down. You might kill it incidentally, which has happened to me before, but otherwise, as I keep saying, focus the boss. Also remember to swap your combat items to the appropriate ones that you want before you enter the lair itself. All right, all that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. Let me know if you enjoy the boss guides and if you want me to do someone else or which one you want me to do next, that's fine. I'm not that eager to do hero guides yet just because I know heroes are going through some really big changes. And I felt that Harvest Child in terms of mechanics is probably going to be where it's at for a long time. Maybe some numbers get changed or maybe like the debuff can't be resisted anymore, the hunger debuff. But as it is right now, I think the core of the fight's gonna be the same. So I'm pretty comfortable making this. We'll see. Hopefully Red Hook doesn't screw me on that. Who knows? But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.